Hello there. So, um, as I posted earlier, for those of you that follow me on Facebook, not how many sure how many of you that watch these do, um, I'm going to do something a little different this year. I've never done a top five worst films of the year, but I figured why not talk about some of the ones I didn't like. I like to keep things positive on this channel. I prefer to review things that I like. Now, you may be wondering, okay, then where's the top five or top ten best films of the year? That video will have to wait until March, and here's the reason why. Where I live in the theater I'm by, I didn't get to see Lady Bird, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, The Shape of Water, or I, Tanya, or The Darkest Hours. Well, that one just didn't get in there. And there's a couple of those that I think they might crack my top ten. And by the time I get to watch all those on video, it'll be sometime in March. So in March, I'll be giving a video for top 10 best films I saw in 2017. This is... I intentionally stay away from films, in the theater especially, that I know I'm not going to like. Like this year, I did not go see Pitch Perfect 3. I did not go see Boo and Medea Halloween 2. These are movies that I know already I'm not going to like. Now, how, if I ever start making money doing this, if I ever get a, a follow in 20 years, if I build up more than 100 followers that watch this stuff, yeah, if I start making money, sure, I'll, I'll see everything then, because then why wouldn't I? So, I'm not doing a top 10, because I stayed away from a lot of bad films this year. This is the top five worst films I saw this year. I have to stress that because I, I don't watch the pure flicks shit films, those preaching to the choir religious movies that are all the same exact fucking movie, like God's Not Dead and God's Not Dead 2, that are some of which are okay, but some of them are like, like God's Not Dead are insulting. I stay away from those films, so you won't see Let There Be Light or any of those films on this list. Now, my top four worst films of the year was easy for me. It's that fifth one that I struggled with because I thought, well, do I put Transformers there because last night was a pretty bad movie. Well, it was aware of how bad it was. I knew going into it it wasn't going to be that great, so can't include Transformers. Now, do I include uh, something like My Little Pony? No, that was fine for what it was. So, unfortunately, the number five worst film of the year list has to go to what I consider to be the most disappointing movie of the year, and I hate to do it. Number five is The Mummy with Tom Cruise. This was a film that, on paper, looked great. Uh, the trailers all looked amazing. Um, you could tell Tom Cruise was having fun in the movie. There was nothing bad about any of the performances except for one, and that was Russell Crowe when he was Dr. Jekyll. Now, that's how it's actually pronounced. I know we all say Jekyll, but it's actually pronounced Jekyll. So when he was Dr. Jekyll, I'll say he was, yeah. Now, when he turned into Mr. Hyde, it got a little different. I, I enjoyed that. The problem was with, with The Mummy is the first half hour of the film was really good. Then we get to a scene in a bar after he, he survives a plane crash, and from that, the, the movie just took a nosedive for me, and it didn't get interesting at all until the last, like, ten minutes of the movie. Which is the last ten minutes are a pretty satisfying conclusion. Um, the only thing that saved this from going lower on the list was Sofia Batella's performance. I've become a huge fan of hers. I loved her in the first Kingsman movie. Loved her in this, and she was amazing in Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde is probably going on my top ten favorite list. I loved that movie. So number five, The Mummy. Number four. Number four is a movie that I saw by myself, and it was one of the only times in the theater that I've actually fallen asleep for a decent amount of time. I must have fallen asleep for three or four minutes during this movie. The movie is a movie I did a review on here. It was one of my lowest viewed videos because no one ever had heard of the movie. I highly recommend you go back and watch the review. The movie is called Free Fire. Free Fire was a mess. It was not directed well. It had really good actors in it, like uh, Brie Larson was in it, and I like her. Killian Murphy was in it. I like him. It was just so dull. It was so lifeless. It was a movie that thought it was paying homage to Quentin Tarantino films, but it was just ripping them off in a bad way. Um, Free Fire is a movie I, I recommend that people stay away from. It wasn't even worth the $6 I paid for it. In fact, my buddy Jeremy that does a car reviews with me, I told him, you're probably glad you didn't see this one. The one I wish he had seen with me in the theater was Beauty and the Beast, because I, for one, really enjoyed that film. So, number four, Free Fire. Number three is going to be a, a surprise, because uh, this movie is nominated for Oscars, but I agree with the Oscar that it's nominated for. My third worst film of the year was Roman J. Israel Esquire. Now, the movie was boring, lifeless, very poorly directed, considering it's from a director I really like, the director of Nightcrawler. 
uh, it's nominated for an Academy Award for Best Male Performance with for Denzel's portrayal as, as Roman Israel. I actually agree with that. Denzel is the only saving grace of this film. It's the only thing about the movie. Well, I can't really say that. Uh, uh, Colin Farrell is actually pretty good in the movie. Um, but Denzel, was, he did he put his heart into that performance. And it, this could easily have been the worst movie of the year, but Denzel was really good. And if, I don't think he'll win Best Actor, but getting nominated, he absolutely deserved it because he did the best with what he had. And never in a movie have I seen a character die, and I just so didn't care. A main character in a movie died. And I was watching it, like, when it happened, it was so anticlimactic, and it showed barely of it on screen. It took place off screen. <sighs> so... Roman J. Israel Esquire is my number three worst film of the year. Now we're down to the bottom two. Those other movies I mentioned had a lot of parts I didn't like, but I didn't hate those movies because each one had something to it that I could latch on to. The next two films, I haven't done hard drugs since like, since like 2002, and these two movies put me in rehab three times this year for two movies. The, the second movie was not my number one until just two weeks ago when I finally saw another one. And as soon as I say what number two is, a lot of you are out there are going to immediately know what number one is. Neither of these movies are movies that got a review from me online because I didn't see either one in the theater. One, because it looked so horrible I didn't want to. The other one I barely heard a thing about and other stuff was playing. So the number two, worst film of the year, I happen to own both of these. A Cure for Wellness. This movie actually made me more angry than the worst film of the year list. And we'll, I'll explain that when I get to the worst film of the year. This movie had Dane DeHaan giving the best performance he's ever given. It had Jason Isaacs, Lucius Malfoy, giving a stellar performance. The cinematography was beautiful, so well shot. The colors, the way they blended with each other. As they build the anxiety in the film, it was a well-directed film. It was Gore Verbinski, who directed some of the Pirates films. He directed that Lone Ranger movie that everybody else hated but me, uh, which I still say that movie could have used some editing that could have been 45 minutes shorter and been the same goddamn movie. This is another movie could have been 45 fucking minutes shorter and would have been the same goddamn movie. This movie made me mad because it had performances, set design, the costumes were great, the story was so fucking stupid. I could not pay attention to this. This is one of those, you ever see a movie that's just needlessly, intentionally uh, pretentious? Like every Baz Luhrmann film ever made? Like that Moulin Rouge shit that he made? And what was that other? He did that horrible Romeo and Juliet abomination and that Gatsby movie that had a really great performance with Leonardo DiCaprio, but the rest of it was shit. That kind of filmmaking that's just pretentious as hell. Like, look how artsy we are. Look how artsy we are. As they shove their fist up your ass. That's this fucking movie. It's stupid. None of it makes a goddamn bit of sense. The timeline of this movie is completely impossible to follow. You can't fucking follow it. When they're telling you, oh, this happened 100 years ago. It's like, okay, so is the young girl in the movie 100 years old? And if she a didn't age, then why did Jason Isaacs' character age? Because he looks 60 in this movie. I actually do recommend watching a cure for wellness because you have to see this fucking movie because so so somebody could come to me and go I, what the fuck was that I have no fucking idea so I won't be doing a full review of that movie because it, it doesn't deserve it. it it was a it was a terrible movie I I didn't enjoy any of it uh, except for like I said the, the, the some of the performance was really and Mia Goth was actually really good in the movie and I haven't seen her in much hey kids guess which one is the worst movie of the year for me I have seen movies in the past that have made me mad while I was watching them, like movies that I've gotten more and more angry, but sometimes I can laugh about that. As we all know, I do this to fuck with my wife, but I genuinely don't like the movies, but I like to pick on her because she likes them. Hey, to each their own. It's, it's, she knows I'm busting her balls. The Divergent Films. The first two are terrible movies, but you can kind of still watch them because some of the action's kind of well shot. But that Allegiant movie, the third part, made me so mad while I was watching it that I started laughing about how angry the movie was making me. Not this fucking piece of shit. No. 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 Bad movie. Never take your kid to see this movie. This movie is insulting to children's intelligence. Okay? We didn't care as much for Paddington 2 as everybody else seemed to, but guess what? It doesn't insult your child's intelligence. It's easy to follow. It's fun. It's safe. It's, it's not trying to be something. It's not. This thought it was being provocative. This thought it was like 
stimulating your brain. And it had some excellent per people in it. One of my favorite actors on the planet right now is T.J. Miller. I love T.J. Miller. I can't wait for Deadpool 2 because, honestly, his character, besides Deadpool, of course, was my favorite of the movie. My favorite lines in cinema history is when he goes, wait, I, I help you, but I don't want to. And, and Deadpool's just like, okay, and just leaves. Let's see who else was in this. Stephen Wright, Maya Rudolph, Anna Faris, James Corden. I don't like James Corden anyway. He sucks balls. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge, Christina Aguilera, uh, Sofia Vergara, and... Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. Jean-Luc Picard, who I pick over Captain Kirk. Yes, Captain Picard is the true captain of the Enterprise. No arguments. No arguments in the comments. No. If I look down there and there's an argument to that, I go, well, Captain Kirk, no. Jean-Luc Picard is the real captain of the Enterprise, and he was the shit emoji in this movie. The shit emoji. Patrick Stewart. They had Patrick Stewart, and he was a fucking shit emoji. That movie was horrible. It was completely disjointed. There was no consecutive narrative. There wasn't anything fun about it. I like a kid's movie where you can just turn your brain off and have fun with how dumb it was. Honestly, that's kind of how My Little Pony was. Even though, go watch my review. My friend Jeremy hated it. My, my friend Jenny that I've mentioned on here that watches my reviews, she said it was her favorite one of my reviews, so that's cool. Go back and rewatch my My Little Pony review. I kind of enjoyed it. It was so dumb, but it was fun dumb, and it wasn't beating the kids over the head with how stupid it was. That movie is terrible. If you see any movie from last year, animated movies, go see Coco. Coco is going to be probably in my top five, not just my top ten, but top five films from last year. Coco was amazing. Not the Emoji Movie. It was so bad. And because I hate my friend Jeremy secretly so much, the next rum review we're going to do, which is in like a week and a half, is going to be on the Emoji Movie. I'm going to force him. Because he won't drive drunk. He's like me. Has a drink, drink alcohol, he won't drive. And I'm going to make him sit down and watch the Emoji Movie with me because I want somebody else to be in the pain that I was in. I want to say I felt the pain so you didn't have to, but no, you have to experience it. Go see the Emoji Movie and cry. Not because it's a sad movie, but because everybody has one moment in the movie where you chuckle a little bit and then you hate yourself for it. That's it, my top five worst films of the year. It'll be about a month and a half before I get around to the best because I, I re the one I want to see the most is, is Shape of Water. One, I'm a huge Sally Hawkins fan. I loved her in the Paddington movies and I think she's a wonderful actress, so I can't wait to see her. I like Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro as a director and a writer, so I'm looking forward to that for that. So Shape of Water is one I'm definitely going to see before I do my top ten. As it stands right now, my two favorite films of the year were Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Logan Lucky. Coming up close to that is a movie that a lot of people didn't see, a lot of people didn't watch my review for it either. Happy Death Day is going to crack my top ten. I'll go more into that when I review it. Uh, that's it for me for now. I'll be back this weekend with um, Winchester. Looking forward to that. See you later.